Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This video is totally uncalled for. Um, I know it's like really, really random, um, but I just seen a lot of negative feedback on my last video. I just wanted to let you all know that working on beamers is, for me personally, it's like a hobby. I like working on it. I've seen a lot of your guys' uh, comments on the last video, and I had a video planned for today, but instead of putting out that video for today, I put it in the next two days. Um, I really wanted to just address a couple topics you guys were bringing up. Like the first thing you guys saying that, um, the wide body turned out really bad. I mean, not the wide body, it looks like a wide body. A lot of you guys said it, was, it looks like a wide body. A lot of you guys have said that um, pretty much it's just super ugly. It was, it was a nice try, but it's still terrible. You should get it professionally done. I guess now, after reading all your guys' comments, I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna continue and continue to make it as good as possible and thinner up the layer of Bondo, because I heard a lot of you guys saying if you thick up the, like if you make it like that big of a Bondo piece, it's gonna start to crack, it's gonna become brittle, so um, I'm gonna end up th uh, thinning it out and uh, pretty much just getting as smooth as possible. I'm just gonna keep working on it. It's gonna take a lot of time, but I love doing everything myself on these cars, and when someone asks me, though, how'd you fix that, how'd you fix this, I don't wanna tell them I took it to a shop, I wanna tell them how I personally did it. It's just something like a little bit of pride, I don't know, it's just me personally, um, that's one thing. And then um, when I mentioned that another video you guys were saying um, you know it's good and all that you're working on your car but there are some things that you should do at the dealership at a shop you know at an indie shop and I 100% agree with you guys there are some things I can't do on my car but I feel like I can do this and if I can't do it no harm no foul rip all the bondo off and um, you know take it down to a shop it's not the end of the world but um, again personally me and my brother we looked in uh, financially and um, is it really worth it like in you know look at our perspective the car has 127,000 miles. It's not that bad. It's 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 fairly it's okay, um, but at the same time, we got it for around $3,400. Runs and drives is just you know it was pretty much all cosmetic issues. Now you guys tell me. I took the car to multiple shops and they quoted me $1,500 just for the quarter panel. Now imagine if I just took the car to a shop to get the door replaced, the fender replaced, and the quarter panel fixed. We're talking about at least, at least maybe two and a half to three grand just for, I mean, like, that's at least. I'm talking like it can go up to five to seven thousand dollars just depending on where you take it. We got it cheap mainly because um, my brother wanted to get the car cash. He learned from my mistake. I know a lot of you guys who have financed this car regret it. I regret it. Um, not entirely. I mean, there because I have problems with the car. It's the reason why I regret financing it. But my brother, he was like, Nor, I don't want to finance, I don't want to deal with problems. If I want to let go of the car, I can. So why would I tell my brother to spend $1,500 on a repair when he can spend $1,500 on so many other things? It's just really unpractical. I can pretty much fix it or do quite close to it for around, you know, even $100. I mean, I know at this point, it sounds like I'm rambling on, but I just want you guys to understand my perspective. It's not worth putting half of the car's value into a little quarter panel fix, especially when they're gonna use the same material I'm gonna be using at home. It's just a matter of who does it better, you know? Now, if you compare a $100 job to a $1,500 job, of course you're gonna be uh, more picky on the $1,500 job because you spend a lot of money. You're gonna want it to turn out very nice, but when you spend $100 on a on a job, you just, you just, uh, you just want it to be more practical, you know? That's just with the wide body. I mean, not just coming to adjust anything on a car. The only thing I've gotten fixed on this car at a dealership was the water pump or thermostat. And look, if you guys have checked out um, Simply Car Things' his video, he even talks about how that is the biggest financial mistake he's ever done. He got a hose replaced for $500. That hurts. That really hurts. I ordered that exact same hose for $27. I did it myself. You know, $27 to $500. Who cares who installs it? Um, I'm pretty sure the fitment was on point because it was OEM BMW part for $27. It was really cheap. But me buying a water pump, it would have been like, the whole water pump kit would have been $500. I could have done it myself. Um, but, you know, I decided to take it out of BMW and paying $1,800 for them to do it. It's just very unnecessary because now when I want to sell the car, I look into how much I put into it and it's just, it doesn't make any sense for me. I don't want to sell this car for, let's just say, I don't know how much, you know, these, the value of BMWs depreciate so quickly. When you're putting a lot of money into it, it's going to be hard to sell and you're eventually going to stay with the car until it eventually breaks down. That's just, the, you know, the facts of it. When you're doing maintenance yourself and um, you're looking into selling the car, you don't lose that much. You know what I mean? So if my brother ever wants to sell his car, the car, his value of his car, like, um, you know, salvaged with 130,000 miles, is typically around five grand. So if we put around seven grand into fixing, like seven grand in total, like the car's price and all the fixing, um, it's just really unnecessary, you know? We're just trying to make it the best we can do 
um, with the budget that we have as students and um, you know enjoy these beautiful cars. If you guys didn't see my video, BMW gave me a list of things that were wrong with this car. It was maybe over $10,000 worth of repairs that this car needed. I done half of those things for just under you know a grand. So from 5,000 to 1,000, if you just do it yourself, I mean, Chew, I messed up a few times. I remember when I replaced the radiator, I cut a few hoses. And I remember when I um, when I uh, tried to do a couple flushes, I uh, messed up my expansion tank, the bleeding screw. I stripped it in there and it messed up and I had to get a new expansion tank. But look at this way. You have so many tries to do it yourself until the value of what you did hits the dealership. So the expansion tank cost me $70. BMW quoted me $700 for a replacement. I can mess up 10 times installing that thing before I figured out that it's not worth it, you know? There's no way you'll mess up 10 times. You just learn from your mistakes, gather information, see what you did wrong, you know, do some research, and you can do it yourself. That's what I love about DIYs. You, you have the satisfactory of knowing that you save so much money. Now, this could have all been avoidable by not getting this car. <laughs> a lot of people tell me that. Why do you get a BMW if you don't want to deal with all these problems? I don't want to deal with these problems, but is it worth dealing with the problems? As crazy as it may seem, yes it is. I love this car. It's, a, it's a, literally a piece of garbage. Um, when it comes to maintenance, but I love it so much and that's pretty much um, I, I'm pretty sure all BMW owners would say the same They are sick and tired of taking care of this car, but they just love it so much and it, you know That's just how BMW is now to go back to the topic of the last video the wide body Guys it cost me just under a hundred dollars to do what I did on that video now It doesn't look perfect. Don't get me wrong. It's not even a finished product I still have to wrap it when I wrap it. It's gonna look a whole lot better It's gonna look a whole lot better than when I got the car and from your guys' feedback, do not worry. I'm gonna do probably at least a three more sanding, like I'm gonna say, keep sanding it until I get it all the bumps smooth as I can. And I'm just gonna make it the, the layer as thin as possible because, yeah, you guys are right. There's no need to rush. Do your best, work at it your hardest. Even like, like I said, even if I spend up $200 of things I need to do to make it look as great as possible. That's $200 compared to the $15 I would have to take at a dealership or um, you know, at a, at a shop, a body shop. And at the same time, I have the satisfactory of knowing that I did it myself. I'm proud of myself. I'm proud of what I've done. Um, it, you know, it's just, I guess it's just kind of a personal thing. Would you rather have a, uh, you know, a peace of mind to get into a dealership or doing it yourself? I guess it really just comes down to that. Um, so if you did enjoy this video, smash the like button. And don't worry, I'm gonna continue to work on the wide body. Um, and that's the end of that. I I'm not gonna let y'all down on that. So remember to stay humble, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out. She got me saying, Yalla, huh, baby. I need you to see me. Quit with the front and then put your guard down, girl. We know you ain't easy. She got me saying, Yalla, huh, baby. I need you to see me. Quit with the front and then put your guard down, girl. We know you ain't easy.